Today, we're going to talk about pour overs. Pour overs, that magical interplay of coffee and water in a single serve device. Pour overs, what you brew with a kettle that costs $400 when you don't really need one, but you feel like you have to because it just feels so right. Pour overs, there's a thousand of them to choose from. Which one is the right one for you? Which one is going to give you that small brewing advantage that'll take your coffee from zero to hero? Pour over, it's the defining aspect of the third wave for letting coffee speak for itself. How could anything be so elevated? Pour over. For as much talk and energy that revolves around the idea of making pour overs, they weren't always so cool. I got my first coffee job in 2001 and my first really, really serious job in 2006 when I moved to San Francisco to start working for Ritual Coffee Roasters. And there were some things going on in the industry with pour over. Blue Bottle used to make these by the cup brews in their Hayes Valley kiosk, but by and large, no one really cared about pour overs. Why? Because everyone was focusing on making espresso. There was this new world of espresso emerging. People were moving away from the old ways of filling up the doser, two clicks to dose a double shot. If you even know what I'm talking about, you're probably old enough to remember. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, good for you. You never had to experience that weird, strange time. But espresso was this new, exciting thing. There was this really intense lack of science around coffee, so there was a lot of exploration. And some of it led to some pretty poor results, but the exploration, I think, was good because it led to curious people. It led to people trying different things and people learning by doing. There was a lot of trial and error. Espresso. Espresso's fun. Espresso's why I love coffee. Espresso was the place to be. Pour over, yeah, it was kind of there. Maybe there's some shops in the... 90s kind of doing a thing. Santa Cruz Coffee Roasting here, where we're at, is actually legendarily accredited. Does that even make sense? Le- accredited? Legendarily accredited? That makes no sense at all. Roll with me. You know what I'm talking about. You know. They are. They supposedly have one of the first pour-over bars anywhere ever in the nation. There's a contingent of people using these paper Melita filters at their house, and you could buy those filters at the grocery store, put them in these really weird, cheap plastic brewers, and people would use it to make coffee at home. But in the commercial and in the specialty coffee scene, pour-overs were kind of birthed out of the absence of something that had kind of taken this stronghold in the the by-the-cup brewing scene, which wasn't really there before, and that was the clover. People love technology. New options. You can do new things. You can do this weird stuff. Whatever you want to do, it's possible with technology. A few years after I started working at Ritual, this group of people were working on this coffee brewing device. Something that we hadn't seen before. It looked like this square box with a little water faucet on top. It had this little disc that moved up and down that had a screen on it. What the hell was it? I don't know. There was a squeegee involved. This was a clover. It was a little startup that was building a coffee brewer and it was a vacuum brewer. So the top, you'd have this chamber with this piston that had a screen on top and the piston would drop down. You'd put coffee into it and then that little water faucet thing would squirt water on top of it. So you had all this coffee in this chamber. You could stir it, agitate it. There was a special little spatula thing. And then The piston would rise back up. There was a suction from underneath. It was a vacuum press, and it would pull the coffee out, shoot it out of this tube right into your cup. Single-serve coffee brewing sounds incredibly complicated, and it kind of was. But the thing that people liked about it and the thing that it was really sold on the back of was that it was infinitely adjustable. You could tweak pretty much anything you want. So if you want your water at a certain temperature and that temperature is different for each coffee you want to make, that's cool. You can program that in the machine. It holds profiles. If you want to run different brewing times for each one and it would automate it, that's cool. You could program that into the machine. It gave you a lot of flexibility.